So we return to Roman numeral section 4 of our PowerPoint notes, a discussion of the electromagnetic spectrum, and also a review of how wavelength, frequency, and energy are all connected to each other. So what you see here is a lovely graphic of the electromagnetic spectrum. And notice that they give you some pictures to give you a feeling for the size of things. Uh, notice that radio waves are quite large. They can be a thousand meters long. And when you go over to the far side, here's a water molecule that's 10 to the minus 10th meters long. And even shorter are scary x-rays and gamma rays. So if we're talking about wavelength, the width of a baseball would be like around a tenth of a meter or 10 centimeters. And that gives you a feeling for the size and range in which electromagnetic radiation can travel through space. Down at the bottom, it shows some of the sources of it, but I think what's most important is to look at the two lines at the bottom. Here, going from right to left, the waves are getting bigger and bigger. So that means going also from right to left, the frequency should be getting smaller and smaller. Remember, if the wave's really long, fewer can pass by per second. Well, what we're going to do is make the connection then with wavelength to frequency and frequency to energy one more time. So if you look at the energy column down here at the bottom, notice that the large energy waves are over here on the right hand side and the low energy ones are over on the far left. Well that's why radio waves can pass through your room right now carrying information from the nearest radio station because the waves are so so long according to this chart the energy of them is quite small and not damaging to human tissue. So we're going to give you some examples of that now in just a moment. This is a tiny slice of the electromagnetic spectrum shown in a slightly different way. And this time they flipped it over and put the long waves on the right and the gamma waves over here on the far left, but the relationships still hold true. And notice that the human eye is only able to see a tiny slice of this electromagnetic uh, radiation. Remember, all energy passes through space as waves, and they can be giant or small waves, but the part that we can see is just a little sliver of that menu of choices. Now, there are some critters out there that can see in the infrared. That would include animals like pit vipers. Uh, rattlesnakes are an example of that. And they hunt their prey by sensing heat. So that's what the infrared means. And there's a lot of insects like bees who are seen in the ultraviolet range. So what they see is quite different than what we see when we look at a flower. But the relationship is still the same. Notice that as wavelength gets small, frequency gets very high. And as you'll see, the energy will also be very high over here for all of the waves that are closer to the left. Just a little side note for those of you into science fiction movies. Think back to the original Predator movie, where our former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is out being hunted and hunting that alien predator that comes to Earth during heat waves for human being hunts. And if you remember in that silly movie, there was a scene where Arnold is able to escape the detection of the predator because he's coated himself with mud accidentally by rolling around in some tropical rainforest along the side of a river. Turns out the cool mud cooled down the hot-blooded Schwarzenegger, and so the alien who sees beings with infrared couldn't see him as long as he held really, really still. That holding still seems to be important because in Jurassic Park, remember, you can avoid detection by a T-Rex if you just don't move. Something to remember if you find yourself fighting aliens or extinct dinosaurs. So here's another shot of the electromagnetic spectrum again that we were talking about and just gives you a feeling for the size and range by looking at common objects as to the length of the waves of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, as we said, that tiny slice that's visible, the Roy G. Biv, let's see if I get it right this time, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, that's just a little bit of the electromagnetic spectrum that the human eyeball is evolved to see. Our human brain has a huge section toward, devoted towards understanding our vision and the light that comes through our eye. And we're a highly visual species. That's why vision and color are so important to us. 
Uh, just another shot of that, but re-emphasizing now, and I don't like the fact we're using F here for frequency, but okay. Long wavelength means low frequency. Low frequency means low energy. Short wavelength, inversely proportional to frequency, means high frequency. And if there's a big high frequency of waves coming at you, those have lots of energy. So all of those forms of electromagnetic radiation, including visible light, travel through space, a vacuum, at the same speed. 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's amazingly fast. We have a formula that we can use that shows the inverse relationship, be sure to answer that correctly on a test, between wavelength and frequency. Greek symbol lambda, wavelength. Greek symbol nu, frequency. This number, speed of light, never changes. So if we know the speed of light and we know the wavelength, we can calculate frequency. And we will do or have done that in our spectroscope lab. How are they inversely related? One more time, little wavelength must to mean big frequency because this number never changes. So if wavelength gets small, frequency must be big and vice versa. If wavelength is big, frequency must be small. Each line spectrum, one of those bright line spectra that we saw in a previous slide and that we will or have seen in our spectroscope lab, has a particular frequency because the light came into the spectroscope with a specific wavelength, which is associated with a specific color for the human brain, well, that's also associated with a specific frequency. Know the wavelength, know the speed of light, find the frequency. It's really quite simple math. Now, our buddy Max Planck was able to quantify this. He said that if you have high frequency, you're going to have high energy. And with this equation that we will show you next, you will be able to find the energy of a single bundle or photon of light at any particular frequency. It's a direct proportion this time. We're going to use this formula which says that the energy that is being released as excited electrons come down from high energy states to lower, they give off a bundle of energy in the form of photons of light. The quantum of that, the amount of energy that they possess, is found simply by taking frequency and multiplying it by a constant, Planck's constant. And that number was 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. Let's see why we have that funny unit joule seconds as we go into an example here. So someone did one of these experiments where they got an element or excited and they viewed a spectral line that had this frequency, 3.5 times 10 to the 12 hertz. That means 3.5 times 10 to the 12 waves pass by every second. Put that number in your calculator. Multiply it by the 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34th as you see it set up here. I hope you realize that when you write joule over second or joule dot second is another way to express it, that if these are hertz means per second, I'll be able to have my seconds cancel out and the unit that we put energy into is going to be in joules. So it's not shown real great here. We'll practice doing this a bunch of times or we will have already done this because you'll be doing the spectra lab where you do these calculations. That's about it. Frequency, which is per second or over a second, times joules per second, makes the seconds cancel out. And the answer is really, really tiny, but you have to realize that when you get atoms excited, it's just not one electron that's jumping up and coming back down from a high to a lower energy state. It's a gazillion electrons. So that's how each individual electron might have a tiny bundle, but collectively enough light for you to be able to perceive a particular color, which refers to a specific wavelength, which refers to a specific frequency, and how far away from the center of the atom did that electron go. So to understand that, 
We'll hold that thought until we come to the next vodcast, which will cover where are the energy levels in the Bohr model of the atom, and exactly where do these little bundles of nothingness, the electrons, hang out. Take care.